On this episode of The Turnbuckles, Sonya Deville gets arrested on a firearm charge, Eddie Kingston quits AEW after Dynamite, and Brian Danielson says there's a 33% chance Tony Khan lets him do the NJPW G1. Folks, we're reading your favorite wrestling movie to some wrestling news because it's time for The Turnbuckle. Hello? <laughs> Sonya Deville was arrested in New Jersey recently for having a firearm in her vehicle. According to a social media post from Sean Ross Sapp and a report from TMZ, the 29-year-old began carrying a firearm following the home invasion incident she was victim to on August 16th, 2020. The arrest occurred on February 19th in Atlantic City and Deville has been charged with one count of unlawful weapon possession, handgun without permit. A valet reportedly discovered the weapon in Deville's glove box and contacted the police. DeVille was then arrested at the scene when the police arrived. DeVille is said to have a permit for the firearm registered in Florida, but not in New Jersey. She's in the process of having the charges thrown out. TMZ is reporting DeVille is due in court later this month. When I saw this, I didn't even think it was real. I'm not even going to lie to you right now. Like, sometimes there's news that comes out. Actually, you know what? I think the problem was that I saw it on Reddit. I saw it as a Reddit post, and I thought it was a meme for a second. And then everybody else was talking about it, and I was like, oh, this is actually a thing. She actually did get arrested. So it seems like it wasn't like a, uh, listen, all right. It's not one of those, uh, it's not one of these, uh, football player, uh, types of articles where it's like, Mance is, is flying down a neighborhood doing like 95 and he's got like a Mac 10 in his back seat and you know he's got tequila in his breath and all that. I assume that uh this is pretty much uh gonna be one and done because uh she has a permit it's just not for the right state so obviously everything's getting squared away and once that's done pretty much not gonna talk about it anymore so yeah man uh good to know that it's not you know uh any anything like irresponsible uh and or anything like that or anything dangerous it's just you know again just a uh, paper mix so that's all next we're going to talk about eddie kingston and how he said he quits aew after dynamite went off the air Eddie Kingston's recent frustrations with AEW management reached a boiling point on this week's AEW Dynamite as the Mad King announced his departure from the company. After Wednesday's show went off the air, Kingston said in a backstage interview, I quit AEW, thanks. Earlier in the night, Kingston and his former tag team partner Ortiz were part of the face of the Revolution ladder match, but never actually wrestled inside the squared circle. At the very onset of the match, the brawl between Kingston and Ortiz spilled over to the backstage area and had to be ultimately broken up by a slew of AEW officials. On commentary, the announcers acknowledged that neither Kingston nor Ortiz ever officially entered the ladder match to determine the next challenger for the TNT Championship. In the lead up to Wednesday's show, Kingston wrote, I hate this place, while responding to a tweet promoting the face of the Revolution ladder match, hinting that he had no interest in participating in the match. Furthermore, Kingston had been outspoken with his criticism of AEW's top stars in recent weeks, referring to AEW World Champion MJF as a real piece of crap, not to mention calling out AEW President Tony Khan for, quote, protecting certain pillars who, quote, are not as great as he thinks. Kingston also wrote, screw everyone, in a tweet dissing the entire AEW roster. It's worth noting that Kingston is advertised to appear on tonight's return episode of Ring of Honor TV, which will air on Honor Club. As such, it's possible Kingston is bound for the Ring of Honor roster and will temporarily stay away from all AEW programming. I guess if you're going to move the storyline along and this is the way that you want to do it, sure, I guess, you know, I, I feel like this is oh, a weird decision to make. You could have just had him cut a promo, I guess. He didn't really need to, uh, if he didn't even get involved. You know what I mean? Like, he, it's, it's kind of weird to be like, oh, he didn't need to be in this match. He, he wasn't, you know? Like, you can't even say he didn't need to be in this match. So, it, it, to me personally, I think that this is just a weird decision on AEW's part. But I guess it sort of bolsters the whole Eddie Kingston not liking AEW storyline type deal, even though he's still working for Tony Khan. He's just not where it's like, oh, I don't like, I, I hate uh, Raw or something and then it's like he goes to nxt or something it's like oh uh, okay, sure okay it's like the 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 uh the rick and morty meme where jerry was like walking out it's like fine you're more than welcome to do that you know so i mean listen more eddie kingston on just on ring of honor i don't really have a problem with that so as long as this means he's on tv on a on a wrestling show i'm not really gonna complain finally we're gonna talk about brian danielson and how there's a 33 percent chance tony khan lets him do the njpw g1 climax AEW World Title Challenger Brian Danielson talked about Tony Khan's recent comments that it would be difficult for him to compete in the annual NJPW G1 tournament, saying there's a 33% chance the AEW head would let him do it. 
In an interview with Uproxx to promote Sunday's Revolution pay-per-view, Danielson estimated that his involvement would require him to be off AEW TV for four weeks and that people would have to look at it from a con investment point of view. Does he really want somebody like me who is older to go through that many hard matches, be off of TV for four weeks, and potentially get injured? Probably not, he said. Danielson said he has a dream that himself, John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli, and perhaps Eddie Kingston could all participate at the same time as, quote, that would be just so much fun. However, Danielson thinks the odds of that happening are even lower. Now, if you're asking me if Tony is going to let me go do a G1 and is it a smart move for him? Probably not. But the odds of him letting me do it, I would say a 33% chance. The odds of him letting me, Mox, and Claudio all be gone for a month off TV, an astronomically small percentage. But I haven't even talked to him about it, so maybe with this interview, he'll see it. In a mid-February interview, Khan said that in many ways it would be great for Danielson to do the G1, but that, quote, I think it would be hard for him to disappear from the show, especially if he's the AEW World Champion. I'm not sure if he'll be able to get away from the show that much. We have to wait for the G1 to come up, right? And by the time that happens, hopefully by then we'll have gotten an answer from Tony Khan, whether it be a yes or no. You know what I mean? Like, no matter what he says, hopefully by then we'll have uh, an update of some kind so you know what i mean but for right now i don't think we're gonna really have anything but if you ask me okay i think that that's something that tony khan would happily allow i think that um T tony khan is obviously gonna be okay with doing that considering the fact that uh when AEW was like not just starting but if you remember when AEW was like going through the pandemic and it was during the empty arena stage and that's when like uh powerhouse hobbs like just started up that's when a uh when AEW. that's when john Moxley was running around as the um the iw WGP US uh, champion and then they've had Jay White come over and everything like that so if there's obviously a lot of back and forth so Tony Khan isn't really going to have a problem with putting Danielson and like a couple other people through rotation through NJPW and stuff like that but for right now I don't think he's going to do that I think he's got to he's throwing everybody in a ring of honor and Moxley's got a storyline and stuff like that I think there's too many things happening um, right now for that to uh, really be a factor but did you once not here yet so we just have to wait and see once that rolls up when everything is going to start falling into place so right now we can't really say too much what do we talk about sonya deville got arrested but she's pretty much getting all of that like she's like scooping it up off of the floor and like getting that taken care of so i'm glad to know that uh you know it wasn't again wasn't a serious situation or anything like that and you know it was just a bit of a, a mishap with some papers that's all kingston is quitting AEW, even though he's Oh, he is, though, isn't he? Because he's going to Ring of Honor, but it's still under Tony Khan, so it's like, okay, you know, it's a bit weird. <laughs> um, uh, so, I mean, listen, this pretty much means that we're going to be seeing more of Kingston on uh, Ring of Honor. And if I remember correctly, I swear to goodness gracious, oh, yeah, because they were saying that he was challenging for the title. That's right. They were saying that Kingston was challenging Claudio for the title. So, I mean, listen, Kingston be going from, like, having a slap fight all the way up the ring all the way up the ramp and barely being shown in the match to immediately being like hey world champion i want to fight you i mean if you're gonna take any type of step that's the next step that you want to take all right so this can this can only mean good things for uh, kingston in the future so uh, i can't wait to see what uh, happens with that and brian danielson says there's a 33 percent chance tony khan lets him do the g1 yeah i wouldn't say that it's completely off the table again i don't want to keep like you know harping on it but um until the g1 actually comes up and until these storylines are actually like uh said and done i don't really think we're gonna hear too much from tony khan talking about yeah i want to uh, uh, let them do it and stuff like that for right now i think uh you know we just gotta wait for everything to uh blow over and once that happens i we're probably gonna start hearing more about it maybe not i don't really know yet so we're just gonna have to wait and see how all that turns out Folks, that's going to do it for this episode. Hopefully everybody has a wonderful tonight and a wonderful tomorrow. And as always, big hugs. Big hugs all around.